his very first interview with Victor from the Finnish band from Brimir, right? Ah, Brimir. Brimir. Sorry, yeah. uh, I don't have the the Finnish accent. Yeah, no, it's 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 a difficult name to to pronounce. Everybody has their own way, but it's fine, you know. Everybody can interpret their own way. So this is your uh, fourth album, and uh, so but the the very first one on uh, Napalm Records, right? Mm. So how do you feel to be on the maybe one of the most uh, famous uh, metal record metal record? It feels feels good, man. It's because we we've been very we've had um, partnerships with labels before, but it's been more been a thing when we kind of we do so much ourselves and the label is just releasing it. So now it feels really nice to have a team, you know. It feels reassuring when you're having an email conversation and there's seven people as CC, you know, you're like, okay, mm. somebody's taking care of this stuff. So it feels good. <laughs> yeah, it's more professional, right? Yes, definitely. Did you did you need that? Do you think uh, the band uh, evolves uh, and yeah, you, you need a, a strong team? You need, yeah. And it's also, it's it depends on the band because like, um, some bands they're like um like we're not old but we're not super young so like this social media we're not like totally social media native guys you know so like we are the age when we're still from the age of facebook we're not in the age of instagram and TikTok. <laughs> so it's like it's it's a bit you know have to put a lot of effort in, into these things to to get them to click so it's nice to have some a team that can help us and, and tell us like okay make this and make this and make this you know so yeah Nice. Yeah, it's a very, very, very nice album. We are, I am very surprised by the quality of uh, the band and the album. Uh, you know, I discovered Children on the Bottom at the very beginning in a very small show in Paris. And sometimes you remind me the the, the beginning of Children on the Bottom. Mm -hmm. I don't know if because you are from Finland too, or because of, uh, yeah, the, the keyboards that are really great and... I agree, yeah. We went more, we wanted to dive more into the, the heavy metal sound. So Wings of Fire, it was much more like uh, synthesizers and uh, and these kind of things, but it's also like the work workflow, the whole thing evolved, how we write. And uh, it became like, and uh, for a long time, I wanted to make music with the guitars more up front, and the riffs is really coming from the, or the the music is coming more from the band and not from the other things. But this is also a reason it's become because um, our production tools, the way we work, has evolved, and um, it's become easier for us to to make music like directly with the guitar instead of because I, I write the music and I'm not a guitar player, but I'm a music producer, so I know how to deal with the guitar. Mm. So I learned this this method of how I, I record myself the riffs very slowly. Well, let's say like this, I'm a really good guitarist at slow motion. <laughs> so I can play the pieces and then I can cut them together and it sounds almost like a real guitar. But this is good because it used to be like that. At first I used the synthesizers and the keyboards and the MIDI and the notes to make the stuff. And then I sent to guitar players and um, then they come and record. But in that maybe two weeks before I can have the guitar players come and make the demos in my mind i already started making all kinds of of things you know all kinds of um, synthesizers and effects and things and i fall in love with this but so now it was nice to get the guitars immediately in so i don't start to fool around too much with with the with this and that so we go straight to the point you know with and then the song starts <laughs> so did you have everything uh, in your mind yeah it usually comes from here, and then I translate it to, to MIDI notes, and then I put the guitar, but now I could kind of skip the MIDI between, so it just goes straight from my brain to, to guitar. Slowly, slowly, but it becomes metal immediately. <laughs> so you co-produced the album with uh, Tony Lindgren, right? Uh, Tony Lindgren was just mastering. I did all the other things. So I recorded the, th the things. Johan, our guitar player, recorded some guitars also at, in, in his house, but mostly it was... I, I um, I wrote and recorded and mixed the album and Tony Lindgren just finished up. So it was a, a huge work, but you, you had also a, a huge work on the previous album, right? Yeah, yeah last, last was basically the same process, yeah. And you, you were talking about uh, the mood of the, the new album, which is different from uh, Wings of Fire, 
but also the artwork is really is maybe quite the opposite. Yeah. Uh, Wings was uh, full of colors, uh, and this one is a uh, really dark, uh, quite black metal uh, artwork. I would say. Yeah. Why? Well, I think you can also look back at the past two years. What kind of times we've been living in? It has also an impact. It didn't feel so colorful in in our heads, you know, while we were making it. So that had a, a big impact. And also, like, I also wanted to show my respects to to my where I come from because when I started listening to metal, it was always the really heavy stuff. I got addicted to black metal when I was 11 years old. You can imagine the shock on my mother's face when I br bring her like. Mom, look what my dad bought me. This is like Dimo Borger album with the naked tits and 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 head cut off and pentagram. Yeah. He was like, "Oh my God!" Like, you're grounded. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so um, so this black metal is is like where I my my metal enthusiasm was born. I went straight from Metallica to black metal, and it's always been in my mind. Like, and I love the the merchandise and this stuff. Like. I wanted to make an album with the kind of shirts and merchandise that I, I wear myself also more because I'm, I'm not a very colorful guy. I'm like black and white, you know, maybe some red here and there. It's I just wanted to, to look like how I feel and how we feel in the band currently. And I think it was quite accurate. <laughs> yeah, and it's a good thing for, you know, teenagers. Uh, you have to construct your own personality. You You have to to feel different. Me also, I had the long hair, something 30 years ago, but uh, it's a long time ago, but uh, I still wear, you know, dance, mm -hmm. metal dance. <laughs> it's your identity. Yeah, yeah. Like we wanted also like with everything with this album, with the with the sound and, and um, artwork, we wanted to, to, to really get it like tied to our identity, how we feel now in the moment. And we previously we'd be more of a band like you know more like synthesizers and colorful things, but but this is a good image of how how we are as we are now, and it feels nice to be able to like this is me, you know. Yeah. So uh, did you write also the the keyboards? Yeah. Because I feel this is um, you you were talking about uh, guitars, but I feel uh, the keyboards they are not maybe as much as important as in uh, Children on the Bottom, you know, especially on the very first album, which was uh, something very new at the time. But I feel uh, there are some different atmosphere thanks to the keyboards. Yeah. Yeah, that's the that's a good good choice of words, like atmosphere, because that's what we want to do with the keyboard. We want to boost the atmosphere and the, and the feeling. And like your Children of Bottom, because they have a keyboard player who actually plays the thing, so it's really good to bring that to front. But that also felt like a bit wrong, like not wrong, but but um, because we don't have a keyboard player who actually plays it. So we wanted to, with this album, put the synthesizers a bit more in the back and go yeah. more with the guitars because we have excellent guitar players. Okay, so you all from Finland, right? Yeah, we're all from Finland, except our, our one guitar player, Sean, is, is born in Australia, but he's lived here for, what is it, like 25 years? Okay. I don't think so. He's basically Finnish, but we still speak English. Okay. It's funny, like we like our guitar player speaks Finnish with our drummer, but then we all other guys speak English with the guitar player, and then when we speak as a group, we just switch all the time which language. <laughs> <laughs> which is uh, kind of weird, maybe in a rehearsal room. Yeah. Uh, so there is a, a great mix. Uh, which is, uh, you know, very, um, very strange and, and very pleasant also at the, uh, because there is a mix of Nordic metal uh, between Chinun and Bottom, but also other Finnish or Swedish or even, uh, yeah, Norwegian black metal. Mm -hmm. uh, how, do you, how do you manage to mix all these influences? I think it kind kind of comes quite automatically because all these like styles you described is is it's been the fuel for for the band since we were kids listening to this Scandinavian this like northern uh, melodic death metal or or black metal sound. So it's like it's like really really it's just it's it's the natural thing that comes out. 
Yeah. And it's like what feels good about this album that that um, I just kind of when I write this, it just I just bleh, puke it out, and this is like it comes raw, which is is nice. You so, don't have to think too much about what am I doing; it just happens. <laughs> okay, and um, I feel also some kind of uh, cinematic, um, maybe horror movie soundtracks. Some mm-hmm. kind. Of, are you a fan of cinema and stuff like this? Yeah, actually, my my career. It, besides music, is I, I make sound for film. I'm a foley artist, so I make all the footsteps and 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 this stuff. And I have a company. We make the whole production chain from 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 recording in the in the you know with the guys with the booms and and stuff. So this is like a, in my daily life. It's really like this storytelling. This like you know how, how to boost the story with sounds. And I'm also my really fan of of ambient music and these atmospheres and also electronic music where you get this like psychedelic electronic music is is a really important thing for me and there you have these like crazy atmospheres and uh, so you can hear those those influences here and there. Is there a big thing uh, to make uh, things for cinema in Finland? Because I've read that um, you. All the American movies are not uh, uh, translated. They are only just subtitles, right? Yeah, mostly, yeah. So do you have uh, your own uh, Finnish c- cinematography? Yeah, there is, yeah. But it's the, there, is, there are some really famous um, directors, but the, the kind of, it's quite young, like the, the industry here. And it's now during COVID, My company had a big run up during COVID, which was lucky because all my music thing has been totally COVID was stopping everything. And at the same time, my film company was like film sound company was exploding because everybody is at home watching Netflix and, and whatever. And now they're starting to produce much more programs locally. So you get like Finnish TV series, drama series, Finnish movies is, is go, going up. So so it's it's a rising industry here. It's a good place to be. Are there links between Scandinavia, uh, Scandinavian cinematography, like uh, Norwegian and Swedish and Finnish cinematography? Yeah, the, the style is kind of similar, but Finland is also now like kind of developing, developing this and like learning how to 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 make this this thing. Finnish language is also really hard to 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 make movies or or any drama like sound natural. Yeah, the language is so taka, 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 like pointy, and it becomes almost impossible to hear what somebody's saying if you talk like you talk. So very, very often, what they have been doing for years in Finnish films is you speak exactly like it reads in the paper, and and <laughs> it's it's something we're finally like maybe learning how to 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 do it in another way. But yeah, it's a it's a it's a young industry here, and it's now starting to to bloom. So. Let's have this conversation in 10 years and see what has. And as we speak about uh, Scandinavian uh, um, uh, music, uh, you 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 covered uh, a black metal band, and I, I was very surprised because I was at their show in Stockholm three months ago. It's Dark Funeral. <laughs> uh, so why this band? Why this song? And do they do they know your your cover? Yeah, um, me and our drummer, we are like hardcore Dark Funeral fans. And also, when when he joined the band uh, in 2012, I think it was one of the things we connected very strongly about with him. Like, oh, Dark Funeral, oh, I love you know this song. Can you play this one? Yeah. So it was also a bit kind of like it was my and his idea to let let's do this because we always wanted to to make a cover together and we tried sometimes like he our drummer also plays some guitar and we started making some covers where like we make like the two of us together make everything but we never finished so now it's like okay let's combine everything we need bonus track and stuff you know so let's make it and yeah it also came really natural because um because it's the, our heritage it comes from it's like the the music that that flows in our blood so do they know you and do did they hear the yeah we, our, our pate our drummer asked What? asked lord Ahriman if it's okay if we make it and he was like approved we also we met them we played with them in um on a on a cruise ship festival once a really nice people yeah yeah, yeah. he did and super nice guys and 
the the last album is really great also um so why not a tour with Doug for all why not why not <laughs> just call me man <laughs> Lord, uh, if you see this, just call me. Like I'm coming. <laughs> yeah, I'll send the, the the link of the video interview uh, to, <laughs> to to Lord and his friends. Uh, by the way, I've seen uh, some um, Finnish shows for the moment. Mm -hmm. Something like kind of four four or five shows in the in the summer and after in the fall. And then um, we have a. Um, a big tour planned. I can't give much details right now, but um, everything should be pretty much confirmed. And uh, we're going to do a go do it's like 35 gigs in Europe. So it's our first proper large European tour. Great. So this this is coming and then we're going to also have a lots of Finnish shows added. So we're going to have an album release show probably in, in now in, in fall after the album comes out and uh, and then in in the winter we will have more Finnish shows, but it's also it's been hard to to book shows because everybody all the the venues have just been postponing the shows for two years, yeah. so finding dates is is difficult. But now I expect like maybe in the like now during winter it will start to to even out a little bit. But yeah, I'm waiting eagerly to see what happens next summer because it would be nice to play a lot of festivals in Europe, and I'm so hopeful. I think it's gonna happen. So you will tour next year, right? Yeah, we'll now this this winter on this in this year we will have the European tour. But you okay. know, I'm I'm really hoping that we will have more tours coming. I'm ready to sit in the bus for for 365 days if it's needed. You know. <laughs> yeah, cool. I love touring um, is my my favorite thing. So. So it it will be your very first um, proper European tour. Yeah. How do you prepare? for for that moment yeah well i think I, i'm gonna start by just jogging you know going to the gym because like this tour is gonna be like 35 days straight every day there's no oh. breaks so i think i need to get in shape you know <laughs> and then the band is gonna be be in good shape because we're already gonna be playing playing before but after the 35 days we're gonna be so good oh my god <laughs> <laughs> um yeah cool so Maybe you will you will play in Paris, France? Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> That's a good thing. <laughs> uh, what are the goals with with this band? Uh, the band exists for more than yeah, plus ten years or fifteen years, yeah. Fifteen years. Mm. Uh, what are the goals? Do you feel uh, the band evolves and you 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 have something like uh, one or two steps in front of you? Well, it feels in a way that we only can we now we can start properly because now we have um we also like after Wings of Fire album we signed a, a management deal so we have and a Finnish like domestic shows so we have a really good network here mm. and now with Napalm we have a totally new level of of support and also it's like the first chance for us to really kind of enter the the market in Europe we have a pretty good like strong following in in in, in Finland yeah. But to to be able to replicate this in in Europe, and I think it's going to be like very possible now. So I hope now with this album that we can establish more, establish ourselves in Europe, and then from there just you know go up. And it feels like we're just about to start now, and I'm you know I'm ready for 15 more years. <laughs> Great, yeah, it's the very very good second part of career, mm -hmm. and uh, let's hope the best for you and this this album what to finish what are the the, the topics you, you want you to to talk about like um uh you you are inspired by the nordic mythology like um there is a song of uh, about the god one of mm -hmm. the god of the nordic mythology no, we're we um we're we're not the folk metal band or viking metal band nothing like this but we like we really like the the narrative and this like the whole the themes and um, and we like to to write when when I write stories lyrics I like to use the symbolism from this uh, Nordic mythology also because it's it's close to 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 us from where we come from and it's a it's a familiar kind of like um, like amorphous yeah, yeah a bit yeah yeah but like yeah I like to to boost it I like to us to to kind of you know flirt with this Viking and um, 
folk themes, but we're not the folk metal band, but they, they're all always really important. And I always, always when I'm, I'm able to put in something about Odin or whatever, I will put it. <laughs> and so it's it's about feelings. It's about saying like this. The lyrics. Yeah. Yeah, a lot about feel, feelings. Now it was also about um, many songs is talking about travel. And I only realized later after the album was ready, like correcting the lyrics for, for print. I was like, hey, actually, most of the songs, many tell about traveling somewhere. And okay, this because we've been stuck in, in, in COVID lockdown. And before lockdown, we were um, touring a lot. So there was a big, you know, a missing to get back on the road. You and, wanted to escape. Yeah, you want to escape. Yeah, exactly. So th- this was in, in many songs I only later realized. And then also many songs are about how cruel and evil people are. Like also like when you everybody like they love Vikings and and the things, but you also must realize that Vikings were really brutal people. They were not nice guys. <laughs> so when I write these songs about like forged in war, the track when the Vikings, it's about Vikings attacking a castle in in UK or in England, and it's not nice, you know. I don't want to make anybody think, you know, that the oh, Vikings are c- cool. Okay, they're cool and stuff, but they're brutal murderers, you know. <laughs> and many of these themes they're in other songs also because like there's been so much horrible stuff going on that it kind of bleeds into the lyrics. Okay, wonderful. So let's remind this album is out uh, late August. Yeah, 26th. 26th. And then uh, maybe a European tour at the end of the year. <laughs> let's yes. hope so. Mm-hmm. And maybe maybe we'll see you uh, uh, have the, the pleasure to 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 have a chat uh, maybe in Paris and maybe summer festivals next year like uh, uh, like Hellfest we made Hellfest this year seven days I know man I've been looking at the lineup like Jesus when I go there <laughs> <laughs> crazy oh. but yeah I hope to see you there man yeah I hope to see you in Paris this year good mm. thank you very much I think you have uh, other interviews so yeah I have two two more lined up for today so chop chop <laughs> Take care, Victor, Bye. and see Cheers. you soon. Bye.